Whenever I visit somewhere new, there are a few different ways I prefer to take in my new environment. Not so much in the culture or history, but instead through experiencing the native plants, playing along prominent bodies of water, witnessing all the nearby life that water supports, following trails beyond what can simply be seen off the road, discovering overlooked ecological communities teeming with life, and climbing cool geologic features to amazing views. But for me, the best way to truly experience a new place is what fuels all this exploration in the first place. My favorite way to take in a strange new land? Through the local produce that grows from its soils. Maine offered a bounty of fresh veggies on the side of the roads which carried me to each adventure, helping keep me creative in the kitchen and away from boring grocery store produce, especially in the blessing of farm fresh eggs. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. Na -na 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 -na. Oh. This, this, this is a reason to turn around, but this is a reason to do some crazy stuff to turn around. <gasps> this was literally everything I wanted. <gasps> All my money just left my wallet. <laughs> it's actually because I didn't have change and I was not mad about it. I'd be up in this man's side yard right now. Not really, but you know, like, what the heck, yes! So as I was leaving town, I missed a farm stand and it had a sign for potatoes and fresh potatoes. They are unrivaled, so I was a little bummed and I was really hoping I'd pass another farm stand, but when I saw this one, I knew. I did some, some risky business on the road to get back to that stand, but it was amazing. I was a little worried because I didn't have change, um, but once I stepped inside, I realized that was not going to be a problem. I don't know, there are just times like that where you're like, this is a cool space, I need these veggies, I want to support this space, this is awesome. But as I was leaving, the farmer saw me kind of like lingering around his flowers and um, he waved and I said, I yelled thank you to him and he actually ended up coming over. Um, he complimented the, the van dashboard garden, he liked it. And it turns out he was actually a ranger at the state park, Baxter State Park, for like 17 plus years. And now he's gardening, really a man after my own heart through and through. Meeting these kinds of people on the road is always so special, like it's always such a fantastic, meaningful conversation. But on top of that, I catch them local gems. I actually asked him about how I can identify chanterelles, because these are actually wild chanterelles that his grandchildren picked. So he actually let me know a few tips for identifying and finding them in the woods. And at first he was a little concerned about me running into crowds, but then when he found out where I was going, he was like, oh, you'll be the only one up there. So I'm super excited. Uh, just feels like going into pure peace and beauty. It's so, I'm very grateful. And so the local love affair begins. So it's only fitting we start with pasta. This is my favorite preparation for fresh produce since it allows the subtle flavors to shine through, and I was very eager to experience my first chanterelle. Start by heating a pan over medium heat with a neutral oil like grapeseed or avocado, and as always, start with the veggies that take the longest, adding the quicker cooking ingredients as you go. I usually always add my mushrooms and onion around the same time. I also always go with a chickpea pasta for protein and prep extra for later. Pasta is done, you cannot see it, but it's done. <gasps> it's Santa Claus, my god! I'm so excited. Yes. Turning off the heat once the veggies are tender, add a big handful of greens, minced garlic, and give it a quick toss before adding your pasta. Olive oil, yeah. Time, it just needs some time. Yum. And then for funsies, we're also gonna add some basil, basil, basil. And because we're fiends, we're also gonna add a little more garlic powder, pepper, 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 and some salt. Ooh. 
I really do try to keep it simple when I'm trying new produce. Some chili flakes never hurt either. Oh yeah. Ooh, she purred. She a party pasta. Oh my gosh, how pretty. You catch a couple flashes of that chanterelle. Like, look at that gorgeous squash. This bite, pure art, pure art. The mosquito just got me. While the mosquitoes feasted upon me, I deeply enjoyed this seasonal pasta moment from Maine. The colors were giving me that summer to fall transition, and while the simplicity highlights the fresh flavors, this pasta is highly customizable from season to season. But these chanterelles? They go both ways. What makes for a delicious Italian dish can also be freestyled into some creative Asian fusion cuisine. The chanterelles, yellow squash, and carrots made for a fun monochrome color play, so I decided to seal the deal with some turmeric fried rice. Okay, wind, come on now. Carrots are a harder root veggie, so they get tossed in first and covered to cook faster. Be sure to have your rice of choice ready, but this is also a great way to use leftover rice as well. Once the harder veggies start getting tender, you can add your mushies, optional onion, and honestly, this is great with any veggie you please. This garlic is so huge. I think I'm gonna have to break it up and save some. While garlic or ginger aren't necessary, they definitely amp up the flavor. I also find adding soy sauce right before the rice gives the veggies great savoriness. Fry the rice for a minute or two, adding turmeric to taste. In my case, uh, that's a lot, cause I'm a fiend. If it tastes a little bland, add a little salt or soy sauce to taste. And don't forget a little black pepper to activate the healing properties of the turmeric. You can optionally spice it up with chili flakes or sriracha, oh, and an ungodly amount of sesame seeds if you're a bird like me. This is so quick, easy, and versatile for any time of day. You can scramble in an egg, tofu, or any other protein of choice, and get right back to your day in no time. Whatever that may entail. <laughs> And after a long day of exploring, one can reach to summertime staples like potatoes and tomatoes for something simple yet satisfying. This time I'm going for some clean comfort food with potato tacos, adding protein of choice for all that play. A little taco seasoning can help transform some nourishing whole foods into something that feels like a fast food treat. Make it your own by dressing them with your favorite toppings such as vegan yogurt, hot sauce, avocado, truly just go off. It's funny how comforting it can be to create an otherwise sinful meal from fresh ingredients, nourishing your body and cravings. Okay, but after all that diversity, you'll have to excuse the pasta queen making a comeback to go off with another farm stand find. Mmm. Delicata, delicata. Hiya! <laughs> I really need a knife sharpener, so subscribe to Patreon, just saying. Ugh. I love delicata squash because you can eat the skin, which helps with the overall difficulty of preparing delicious winter squash, but even if it's a little challenging to process, the comforting texture and flavor is well worth it. Ah! Delicata, wow! When cooking stovetop, I find cubing the squash and covering helps them cook a lot faster, but you'll still have lots of time to finish prepping for future squashy dishes. Once your squash are tender, add onions of choice. That's so good! Winter squash and sage are basically soulmates. Ooh la la, that looks delicious! Sage really brings out the subtle flavors and sweetness of the squash, pairing especially well alongside fresh garlic. This clove of garlic was just freaking massive, man. So we're just going for it. Ooh, oh, she's a juicy one. Ah, dang, she did. She thick. This squash was just seriously beautiful, especially with the skin. And as you may have noticed, this is basically the preparation of the first pasta dish with different produce and herbs. Yet it yielded a completely different flavor, which is what I love so much about the method. And while this was super simple yet amazing, I ended up discovering a little upgrade alternative that was pure perfection. A little tomato gave the lingering sweetness of summer to the cozy tenderness of this winter squash, which is what makes playing with local produce during seasonal shifts so delicious and fun, especially when you can get some leafy greens on the scene. This would be amazing with any base, not just pasta. Ooh la la, that'd be looking good though. That was a lot of chili flakes. I might regret that. 
for show. But not all this nutritional yeast. Mm -mm. Oh, yes. It's crazy how the addition of two ingredients took this from tasty to sublime, but this squash was not done serving us. I decided to shake up the same veggie combo with different protein, seasoning, and a base for a whole different dish, starting with yet another haul from a few gardens around Maine. I want you to be able to see the cut, but I'm left-handed, so this is what we're doing. Okay, you ready? Ooh. She purdy though. Dang, these are so pretty. Oh my gosh, the colors though. Like, uh, beautiful. Oh, she party that library kale though. Mm, it was free. Oh God, so I know, not for you. Literally all of this from a different garden in Maine. This has to give me some sort of nutrient advantage, I swear. Oh, that's so pretty. Dude, delicata squash is like an unsung hero. I got started on the veggies as my base cooked. The best way to cook quinoa is by simmering it uncovered until it absorbs double the amount of water and then cover it for five minutes off heat. Once all your veggies are cooked, you can add your favorite protein. I went for a tricolor bean blend before hitting it with some garlic powder, cumin, smoked paprika, and oregano, but feel free to customize. I added kale after it was done, but you can also keep it fresh. Ooh, yeah, yeah, baby. That looks pretty darn good, yo. My arms are sore. I think it's from lifting my cast iron so much because I've been filming these videos in the last week. I've been like lifting them to the view, like, you know, anywhere from three to six to seven times a day. It's like a lifting a weight. That's why I'm sore. Casually forgetting she was swinging on a rope swing all evening prior. This cast iron has really been carrying the team for a while now. Oh my gosh, delicious, I tell you. Oh, beautiful. It really did wonders for presentation. This dish shows how versatile you can get with the same veggies. It had been a long time since I had been able to access so much fresh food on the road, and it had my body and mind feeling amazing, fueling my adventures right. I had to soak up as much of this fresh foodie goodness as possible, and there's no better way to see summer's bounty than with some spring rolls. Using some local beets, carrots, and the last few cucumbers of the season, I rolled all of that goodness up with some greens. Oh yeah, 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 spring roll party. It's gonna be the looker. She's gonna be the party one. A spring roll is only as pretty as the produce you're using, so I highly recommend homegrown. I have spring rolling tutorials and other videos, so feel free to binge. Holding it the non-dominant way for me for YouTube, so it's a struggle. But they come out beautiful and stellar every time, yeah. Spring rolls? Yes. Ooh la la. Oh my gosh. Oh, the way the sun hits them. Sun dappled spring roll moment. Oh, gorgeous. Spring rolls are basically naked without a good sauce. And I kid you not when I say I could straight drink this peanut sauce I make with just sesame oil, soy sauce, peanut butter, and optional spicy business like sriracha or chili flakes. I love nothing more than freestyling these dishes for you, so if you'd like to help your girl be able to ball out at more farm stands, I am so grateful for all support in the form of subscribes, likes, comments, and shares with a pal who you want to eat healthier with. You can also pledge to my Patreon for all these written meal frameworks and so much more. For one last little treat, finding some lemongrass always means I'm in the business to make my favorite Thai coconut soup, tomka which makes for a mean meal prep that's easy and delicious. It combines my favorite ingredients like lemongrass, lime, mushrooms, broth, coconut milk, and any veggies you please. Please let me know anything you'd like to cook with me below, and thanks so much for joining me in the kitchen. Until next time.